make ready. Take aim. Fire. So here at the Frontier Culture Museum, our goal is to tell the story of all the different groups of people that came to inhabit this part of Virginia, sort of the, uh, the frontier of Virginia from the 18th century. So to do that, what we do is we have a bunch of different farm sites that show all of our different culture groups in their home countries before they end up here in Virginia, in addition to our Native American site. Uh, and then we have a number of American farms that show how those cultures come together here in Virginia, in America. On the uh, old world side, we're talking mainly about the 17th and the 18th centuries. Uh, the late 17th, well, the early 17th century when uh, the first English immigrants started coming into Virginia. A little bit later on, you had folks from the north of Ireland, uh, Germany. Uh, they made their way into uh, the colonies, uh, into Virginia, you know, via Pennsylvania, actually. So we talk about that time period of roughly 100 years when Virginia was populated by both the English and by you know, some of the Irish and, and the Germans. As these folks are living in, their, in, in the New World, they will eventually make their way into the back country. And the cabin there behind me is, uh, you know, as these folks are bobbing across the Atlantic, they're not necessarily aspiring to, to that cabin, but they are aspiring to the land around it. So uh, for the first time in these people's lives, they can become landowners. They can have a little control of their destiny. And the uh, part of the museum, our American part, is basically you know, what these different cultures evolved into to form this, this uh, culture that's still you know, visible here in the Shenandoah Valley right now. We have a lot of people who come back here over and over and over again because there's always something new to see. Uh, you might come out one day and see us you know, plow in a field or harvest in something, you come out the next day and on that, at that exact same location, we're doing something totally different. Maybe we're working on making some costume or uh, creating cloth or cooking or you name it. So there's a lot of different things that you can see out here. And if you come back repeatedly, you will probably see different things each time you come out. Each one of the exhibits is unique unto itself. Uh, a lot of different period activities taking place. Some of the visitor favorites are uh, obvious, are blacks in the shop. Uh, that's one of our, uh, favorite exhibits. Our tinsmith shop in the uh, 19th century part of our museum is also one of our favorite. Uh, folks enjoy uh, learning about the Native American culture. They enjoy learning about the West African culture and how those blended into uh, the, the culture that we you know, attempt to interpret right now. Uh, some of the activities that visitors will see, they'll see textiles, you know, art's taking place, we do pottery, we do basket making, and most importantly, we try to weave all that into, uh, into both a, into a narrative that uh, shows how people lived and how they settled this particular area. So I think our scope is very, it's, it's broad obviously, so pe people who are only interested in one specific area can still come out and get that area, but people who want a lot can get a lot. I think our format is very compelling to people. Living history as a format is just interesting, it draws people in. Getting to watch history happen can be a little bit more interesting than reading about it on a book for a lot of people. Um, and then the, the, the fact that this concept is not really a concept that you're going to find almost anywhere else. So it's, it's a very unique idea. Our format is engaging and interesting, and the subject matter is so broad that there's something for everybody.